Hello to the friends of the world of paleoanthropology. Today I am so excited to be introducing you to the next episode, episode two of Skulls with Seth. Today we're going to be looking at a very, very cool 3D print that I have that you can't just get anywhere and I'm very excited and proud to have it. And we're going to be looking at it and comparing it to a modern human as we're going to be starting to do. Now you'll see why I don't have to do much of a species introduction in a moment, but it's quite interesting what we're going to be looking at. So I will just start out and bring out the 3D print that we'll be looking at. And I'll give you a moment to examine it, maybe guess what it is, and then I will explain and go further. So here we have a 3D print of a skull that was found in Morocco, in Jebel Irhud near the site of Jebel Yehud, I should say, which also gives its name to this magnificent cranium that was discovered in the early 19th century. When it was first discovered, the people who discovered it did not know where to designate this fossil. The researchers had no idea where it belonged. They gave it this designation and that. And I'm not going to say what just yet, because again, I want to see if you can think of who this is. And now I will hold it up to a modern Homo sapien, you and I, and see if you can maybe glean any more points of who or what species this might be. So now that we've looked a little bit at this guy right here, at Jebel Irhud, who I will also mention dates to about 300,000 years old. 300,000 years. That is well beyond what this species should be. Why is that? Because this, friends, dear friends, is a Homo sapiens. Not in modern Homo sapiens like you or I. Not a modern Homo sapiens like our friend here. But an archaic or basal homo sapiens, as our good friend Professor Chris Stringer is attempting to get the vernacular to be called a basal homo sapiens, meaning this homo sapiens is closer to the base, the root of the genus, than say you or I. Of course, being 300,000 years old, this is critically important because it was believed until this discovery and this dating, which happened I believe in 2018, that Oma 1 and 2 were the oldest human skeletons ever discovered, dating first to around 130,000 years, and the date kept getting pushed back in 160. Now we think Oma 1 is about 200,000 years old, which of course makes Homo sapiens much older than we originally thought to begin with. But now the fact that we have this fossil from Jebel Irhud, which does not look like a modern Homo sapiens, does not look like Oma 1, does not look like Oma 2, but looks like its own thing to the fact where they believe this was a Neanderthal, an early Neanderthal that was still in Africa before they migrated to Europe. Of course, we know that's not how it happened. So of course, this is not a Neanderthal. This is what we believe to be a Homo sapiens. You can see by the lack of prognathism, which is of course how far the face comes out. There's almost none. The face is flat. It is a very flat, um, and vertical skull, and then of course we have this, which is not really a football shape like we see in Neanderthals, it's more globular and rounded like we see in modern Homo sapiens. The brow ridge, of course, is quite, quite prominent, but we can, you know, we can say this is due to how early they are, and again, one of my points of interest is why do we have brow ridges, where did they come from? Why did we lose them? There's theories and ideas that we had lost brow ridges for an ability to communicate that are using them as facial features. And as you can see, the modern Homo sapiens face has almost no brow ridges at all, just like you or I do. But there are individuals within the modern human variation that are perfectly normal that do still have brow ridges. And I don't see them having any complications communicating with their brows whatsoever. So I don't know how well that idea makes sense to me at least. So that's one thing that I'm looking into. So what happened between this 300,000 years ago and this modern humans? 
of course, we can see they're pretty different between the brow ridges, the size of the ocular openings, the, where the eyes are, the nose shapes. This nose is quite a lot larger than this one. But are these regional differences? Are these geographic differences? Or are these species differences? There's some people who will argue that Jabal Irhud is not a Homo sapiens, but is something else entirely. Most people do, however, agree that it is an archaic Homo sapiens. The date just might be a little arguable. But so far, we're stuck at 300,000 years, which is absolutely astounding and pushes our species back farther in time than we thought. And of course, makes us even contemporary with species such as Homo naledi that was in Africa at the time. We could have cooperated with them. We could have, who knows? There's so much we don't know about this time period in Africa where we now know modern humans, or at least archaic humans, with our body shape, we're walking around. This is amazing, and it just provides so many questions that we now want to answer. Of course, with science, especially with paleoanthropology, the more answers we get, the more questions we have, and the drive continues and pushes us forward. So I just want to, for a moment, give you a really good look at this cranium, because it is quite unique. So we'll get a good look at all the sides. I want you to just look at the detail. Look at the detail in this print. It is absolutely astounding. It is my favorite 3D print that I have, not only because of the absolute beauty of it, but the high quality detail of the print. It outmatches any of my other ones. I should probably not drop it then, right guys? Look at that. You can see the fractures. You can see where it would be in the fossils. It's absolutely a stunning print. And now, the really special thing is, you can't just get this anywhere, I am told. I am very lucky and extremely fortunate to have been provided this 3D print by my good friend. And if you are interested in getting this print, I unfortunately cannot provide you with one. Or I can send you at least to the source, the very source who holds the rights to these files, but I cannot tell you enough, you're probably not going to be getting access to these prints. I am i don't have access to the file. I do not. That is not something that I have. I just have the print. And I'm lucky enough and fortunate enough to have that. And it is just, it is my favorite. I mean, just look at this. And now if we compare it, say, to my head, we can of course see it's, you know, it's not completely out of the ordinary. If you saw this person walking down the street, of course, with flesh on them, we might not really think they're that much different. Much less different than what a Neanderthal looks like. And I wish I had brought a Neanderthal skull to look at, but my bookshelf is behind me and I should have grabbed one. Oh well. We have a modern skull to compare with instead. And of course, you can see, as I described with the other skull, there's almost no prognathism. The face is flat, with a vertical forehead, a globular dome, it's not a football shape like a Neanderthal's would be. Modern. Basal. Archaic. So now we have ancient Homo sapiens walking around 300,000 years ago. Isn't that just stunning? I think that is just stunning. Alright guys, I think that's it for this episode of Skulls with Seth. Let's just get a quick comparison of the two skulls we looked at today. Archaic Homo sapiens, basal Homo sapiens, Jebel Irhud, 300,000 years ago, and of course, us modern humans today. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please like and subscribe and set your notifications to let you know whenever I post a new episode. I try to post new episodes every week, if not more. And I, I do this because I love educating. I don't get anything out of this. I just hope it helps you guys. I hope it provides a resource you guys can use. Let me know what you want to see in here next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.